be prepared to question your life if you finish this. Activate the Sentinel Artifact and finish the round within the time limit on round 6. Obtain two items from the Mystery Box while having players randomly teleport on round 9. Open all doors in the map within the time limit and then complete the round on round 11. Use the Essex only and have zombies only appear when firing on round 16. Survive the round with nothing in your hands before getting your starting weapons back on round 23. Complete the round before the timer runs out while while having to be close to damage enemies on round 26, fast travel within the time limit and have Pack-a-Punch weapons disabled while sprinting causes damage on round 29, and clear the grand staircase with friendly fire enabled and inverted controls on round 30. Try not to unsub after watching this. What's going on everybody? This is DK Dynamite. And if you guys care about a purple outline sticker that you guys may already have or a calling card for completing this version of the gauntlet, then today I'll be showing you guys how to complete unsinkable on the hard mode that was just released here in Black Ops 4 Zombies. So for round number one, we have avoid taking damage from sprinting zombies. So you can easily get a strike right off the bat from this one. So the biggest recommendation is to shoot any zombie that you see. But if you have a stiletto knife, then go ahead and take advantage and knife the zombies very quickly just always watch your back because once again one hit will give you a strike for round number two kill sprinting zombies with equipment only pretty self-explanatory and if you do get hit you won't get a strike so just take your time with it if you have to go ahead and throw your wraith fires the easiest equipment to use when playing this gauntlet now for round number three use melee attacks only but the problem is damage from zombies will also give you a strike just like round number one but the zombies aren't sprinting so you can take your time with this one as well just don't get hit it. Stiletto Knife is obviously the easiest way to melee the zombies. Now for round number four, survive the round of sprinting zombies with at least one perk active. So you have to have at least one perk before the end of the round. Obviously put your cheapest perk at the Danu location. I usually always put Time Sleeper Quick Revive just to get things done a lot faster. You only need about 1500 points to buy yourself Time Slip. Now for round number five, use the Essex model only with a twist. Miss shots damage players. Regen is also disabled. So basically, either start the game off with an Essex or buy it off the wall right at spawn and do not miss a single shot or you will get hurt by it and you cannot regen your health for the duration of this round. So be very careful. Now for round number six, you have to activate the Sentinel Artifact and finish the round within the time limit. So the time limit will, of course, be different in every game that you play when it comes to how many players are actually in your match. So the biggest recommendation is to open as many doors as possible before round number six, so that right when round number six comes, you can go ahead and run to activate Sentinel Artifact and you can finish the round within the limit. I think it's only about one minute for a solo game and about four minutes on a four-player co-op game. So... You have a decent amount of time depending on how many players are in your match. But for round number seven, possess a shield at the end of the round. Sprinting zombies do double damage. So if you don't know how to build a shield here on Voyage of Despair, even though you probably should if you're playing the hard gauntlet, I'll have a link and an annotation to my guide on how to build a shield here on Voyage. But you also have sprinting zombies doing double damage. So you're basically playing Black Ops 2 with a two hit down system for the duration of this round. Now for round number eight, eight all buys are disabled weapon fire also drains a lot of your points so the biggest recommendation is to buy your perks or any weapons you might need before the beginning of this round and in order to save as many points as possible play the match out slowly shield bash the zombies or throw your rate fires down to get rid of them as fast as possible so you don't lose that many points every time you fire a weapon now for round number nine you have to obtain two items from the mystery box players are randomly teleported so the teleportation will be extremely funny very similar to the teleportation round on classified so about every 30 seconds or so you'll get randomly teleported to somewhere around the map so the biggest recommendation is to have time slip when you hit the box so you can quickly grab a weapon before you get teleported somewhere else the other recommendation is right after you get teleported is when you should hit the box don't hit the box after about 20 seconds after being teleported always wait until a fresh teleport to then go ahead and hit the box to grab an item from there but for round number 
for 10. You have to defend the cargo hold while you're flooded. Friendly fire is enabled while your perks will cause blurred vision. So by this point, you should be saving your points up anyway for pack a punch and probably don't have more than one perk to begin with. So your vision shouldn't be too blurred. But when it comes to friendly fire being enabled, I haven't tested whether or not downing a teammate with your friendly fire gives you a strike or not. So just watch your shots, use your equipment and specialist accordingly. And you guys can all stand at the back of the cargo hold all in a straight line of sight. So you're not shooting each other or you can stay at the top of the stairs throwing your equipment as well, whatever you guys want to do. But at this point, congratulations. You've now passed 10 rounds of the hard gauntlet and I just unlocked the diamond calling card for hardcore unsinkable. Now for round number 11, you have to open all doors in the map within the time limit, then complete the round. So the time limit is only for opening up all doors and not for the round entirely. So since you don't really have a chance to open up too many doors in a limited amount of time, the biggest recommendation is to save a zombie on round seven or nine to go ahead and open up all the doors possible. If you save up all your money and don't waste them on the box or your other perks, then you definitely have enough money to go through and burn all of these doors that are here on the map. You have one by berths that's kind of just sitting there. You have two in the engine room and the other ones are kind of all by the state rooms and spawn. So not too many doors, only about 21, but usually open up about 18 to 19 by the time you get to this round anyway. So just use your money accordingly so you don't get a strike. But for round number 12, survival wave of the crawling dead, players can only attack while prone. So this is a great opportunity to once again, fill up the chest for the free Kraken by using the stoker's key. So at any point before this round, when you kill a stoker by shooting him in the right shoulder, you'll get the stoker's key and you can go ahead and find the Kraken chest here around the map. If you don't know how to do that quest with the Kraken chest to get a free Kraken later on, I'll have a guide to that down below in the description because you're going to want to save a free Kraken for after the weapon reset on, I believe it's round 23. So just keep that in mind. So what we did in our game was brought all the crawlers to the Kraken chest and killed them accordingly. Now for round number 13, you have to possess a repack a punch weapon at the end of the round. Points drain the slower you move. So the other recommendation we have here is for the end of round 12, make sure you guys save a crawler of some sort and go ahead and repack your weapons so that you don't lose your points during the next round if you're not moving. So once again, you want to save as many points as you can up until this point as you have to repack your weapon. So the only thing you should have spent money on at this point is the Danu perk at spawn for one of the first few challenges and all the doors here around the map. But you need 7,500 points per person to repack your weapon. Now for round number 14, perks, elixirs, packed weapons, health regen, special weapons, and HUD are all disabled. So you just have a normal non-packed weapon to use for the sake of this round. So the biggest recommendation on a co-op game is to have each person training in a different spot. You have one person at spawn, one person mid, one person dining room, and then one person maybe at the poop deck, all running some good trains. And once again, you can't use anything but your non-packed weapon. You also don't have a HUD and you can't use elixir. So it's all about your non-packed weapon. Hopefully you have a good one by this point in time or a Kraken, it's not pack a punch of course, but you could use a catalyst upgrade on your non-pack a punch Kraken. So hopefully that helps you out with this round, but for round number 15, you have to defend the poop deck, but horizontal movement damages players. So unfortunately, any movement besides horizontal movement also damages you. So no matter if you're doing vertical movement or not, you're still gonna take damage from moving at all. I think it's a glitch right now with just this round specifically, not surprised, but the easiest way to beat this with the glitch is to have all teammates stand by the shield and throw a homoculus, throw a wraith fires, shoot whatever weapons you have, and you should be just fine getting through this round but for round number 16 you have to use the Essex model again but the problem is zombies only appear while firing so if you guys thought the Essex challenge rounds weren't bad enough they just took a challenge from dead of the night gauntlet to where you have to shoot in order to see any of the enemies so the biggest recommendation is to either pack a punch the Essex to have slightly more ammo and more damage and to shoot one or two bullets occasionally just to see where the zombies are even if you're not going to shoot the zombies themselves just throw a shot in the air too, just to make sure you know exactly where the zombies are coming from. And if you have good elixirs you're willing to spend, 
don't hesitate to use temporal gift on an insta kill or a nuke whatever it is you guys want to do just make sure you get to this round as fast as possible and don't all stay together make sure to train accordingly and split up a little bit around this big ass map because you'll get catalysts stokers blight fathers you name it so just use everything you got in your inventory to get through this round but for round number 17 you have to kill zombies with headshots only with ads being disabled so headshots aren't that hard to get if you have a kraken or a rocket launcher even though you can't ads you can still use powerful weapons to get through the zombies and obviously you have to get headshots only so you can't use equipment or your special weapon so just train correctly and utilize your perks and just get as many kills as you can without adsing now for round number 18 you have to avoid all power-ups and players must be close to damage enemies so this could be very tricky and is honestly one of the most common rounds to get a strike on so the easiest way to do this if you're on a four player game or even a three player game is to have everybody running their own trains don't be afraid to buddy up if you really have to you could have two people in one spot just watch your step but usually i have one person at spawn one at the dining room one mid deck and one near the poop deck run really good trains and the best weapon to use on blight fathers at spawn is the pack a punch rocket launcher those kill them in about two to three shots it's probably the best weapon to use when it comes to blight fathers because they could easily pull you in with their tongue and you can accidentally grab power-ups while they're pulling you in that is the worst thing that could possibly happen as is you have to be close to zombies while you kill them obviously that applies to wraith fires and hamox as well just always be somewhat close to a zombie when you kill them but immediately take a few steps back after you shoot them or throw the homoculus because you can easily walk into a power-up just watch your step watch the staircases when you're jumping down make sure there are no power-ups in the area because obviously power vacuum is active for the duration of this round but for round number 19 damage to players causes point drain so if you have to once again split up run good trains have a shield on your back just don't get hit or you're gonna lose hell of a lot of points i believe it's about 3,000 points per hit so be very careful this round definitely sucks and could easily drain you before you can pack a punch to buy all the things you need here on the map but for round number 20 survive stokers in the engine room players are randomly blinded so instead of spawning about 10 stokers like on the regular gauntlet it'll spawn 30 so be sure to use your krakens and your specialist weapons straight away don't take a chance with any other weapon just use the most powerful things you have and feel free to pop instant kills whatever other elixirs make you feel better about all of these stokers don't let them pile up don't get cornered use everything you have to your advantage but at this point congratulations if you've beaten this round you now have gotten the platinum calling card for this hard gauntlet now for round number 21 at this point you need to have a level 3 special weapon while regen and weapons only work while jumping or sliding so this could be a big pain in the ass that's why i always say use your specialist as much as possible during the rounds that you are allowed to when the specialists aren't disabled so be sure to get a big train and keep smacking the zombies with the staff or the hammer whatever you guys are actually using just use those specialists to your advantage at any given opportunity when there are big trains so you can get level three before this round comes but you can only shoot and do your things while jumping or sliding so the easiest thing to do is probably just to jump, shoot, jump, place a staff down, jump, throw a homoculus, whatever it is you guys have in your loadout, be sure to be maxed out with this round so that you can use your things while jumping. Now for round number 22, another round that people commonly get a strike on, this is the catalyst round where you have to use corresponding reactive AATs to kill catalysts. Zombies also do double damage, so you're once again playing Black Ops 2 for the duration of this round with the two hit down system. Now if you guys need a reminder, brain rock kills fire catalyst kilowatts kill water catalyst and firebomb kills electric catalyst while cryo freeze will kill the acid catalyst so once again uh hopefully each person if you're in a four player game has a different aat if not make sure two of your weapons have two different aats and you can also use the catalyst types for the upgrade for the kraken if you don't have an aat on a regular weapon so that works as well just train take it very slow and if catalysts aren't spawning kill zombies one by one or if you have to just these spawn them with your specialist whatever it is you guys prefer and just wait for those catalysts to spawn and separate them from the big groups of zombies so you can kill that specific catalyst with the corresponding aat it's definitely not too difficult and we had to kill 30 here in our four player game now for round number 23 survive the round for the given time before getting your starting weapons back so what this means is you will literally have nothing in your hands just fists that you can't even use and you have to survive for about i believe it's 30 seconds with just your hands out 
before getting your starting weapon back. This actually sucks. So the easiest thing to do is to train in different areas of the map and use the fast travel until you're given back either your Essex or Strife, whatever you started the game with. And then at that point, you can then go ahead and get your loadout back. You can pop in a Dead Man Walking, pop a Nuke, go ahead and hit the Mystery Box, pack a bunch of weapon. But the easiest thing to do after this point in time when you get reset is to save a zombie at the end and then get your loadout set up by popping fire sales, temporals, whatever it is you guys want to do. And at this point, you can also pick up the free Kraken you might have already gotten by doing the little Kraken chest quest that I mentioned earlier by getting kills at certain locations. But for round number 24, replenish health drain with zombie kills. Players must end the round inside the engine room. So this round also absolutely sucks and nukes probably won't even help you to be honest. So if you're in a co-op game, everybody bunch together somewhere near the engine room so that by the time the round is close to being over, you guys can run over into the engine room and end the round down there. But the funny thing about this is that if somebody is in the engine room and completely dies and bleeds out, they'll still keep the check mark despite being dead. So that's a good thing to know if you guys are in a co-op game. But if you guys can, if you guys are good enough, you guys can even manage to just play out the whole round in the engine room to avoid risking anything. But be sure to be together as a group so you're not separated looking for zombies to kill to replenish this big health drain you get every time you're not killing zombies. But for round number 25, you have to defend the forecastle with no special weapons while you get a health drain if you're not crouched. So the easiest way to beat this one is just to play it accordingly as you usually would in the regular gauntlet except occasionally crouch to make sure you get your health back. You have quick revive that'll obviously help you regenerate your health a lot faster. But this one could be a big pain in the ass. Use your Hamox and Wraith Fires to your advantage. Use any OP elixirs you're willing to use and be sure to just stick the round out along with the Blight Fathers and Stokers that will occasionally spawn for the duration of this round. You just can't use your specialist weapon. Now for round number 26, you have to complete the round before the timer runs out while players must be close to damage enemies. So the same rule that applied in round 18 where you have to be close to zombies to kill them, that's also on this round while you have to complete it before your timer runs out. So it's only a couple of minutes on co-op and I think even a shorter time on solo. So the easiest way to beat this is to go to the bottom of the grand staircase and just use everything you possibly have to make sure you burn that round as fast as possible. Don't nuke until maybe after the middle of the round. So when you see the zombies are slowing down, that's when you want to nuke. You don't want to nuke right at the beginning to where the zombies are then spawning in again, wasting time. So just do everything as fast as possible and make sure everybody is sticking together. Now for round number 27, the third and final Essex model round, the horrible challenge where you have to use the Essex model only, but this time ADS hurts players. So in all honesty, it's not as bad as the second round where you had to use the Essex, but zombies only appeared while firing. This was a little bit easier. So if you have a good AAT on the Essex, it shouldn't be too bad. So probably Brain Rot or Cryo Freeze are the best ones to use on the Essex for this round, but this is the last time you have to use it. So once you stick it through, you can then get rid of it for something actually good. But for round number 28, heads up deactivated. So your HUD, ADS, equipment, special weapon, and melee attacks are all disabled. So be sure to remember what elixirs were on what part of the D-pad if you guys want to use elixirs for the duration of this round. But you can't use your special, but you could use a pack a punch the weapon. But I would recommend keeping a good weapon unpacked until after round 29, since for the next round, we're going to have to fast travel within the time limit, but with Pack-a-Punch weapons being disabled and sprinting also causing damage. But luckily, sprinting only causes you about five damage every time you run. Not too bad at all. But you have to fast travel within the time limit or else you will get a strike, similar to that challenge with the Hell Holes on Blood of the Dead's Gauntlet, Helcatraz. So the easiest way to do this is to just stick by a fast travel, use everything you got, throw your hammocks, and go ahead and just use your unpacked weapon as much as possible. Utilize those OP elixirs if you're willing to use them and then fast travel at about 10 seconds. Don't wait too short. Don't wait too long or else you'll cut it a little bit too short by fast traveling with like a second to go. It's way too risky. So just be very careful and pay attention to your timer or else you will get a strike. Now for round number 30, you have to read this backwards, but this absolutely sucks. You have to defend the grand staircase just like you would in the original gauntlet, except your controls are inverted and friendly fire is enabled. So yes, you could kill teammates and will get a strike for doing so while your controls are inverted. So just pray that 
pack a punch is at the bottom of the grand staircase in case you want to pack a punch that non-packed weapon you were just using on round 29 but this is the round where you want to go all out if you are currently flawless literally use everything you possibly have because this is probably around a two and a half to three hour game at this point if you're on co-op so just stay in one line of sight at the bottom of the staircase or you can have two people upstairs two people downstairs just make sure you are not shooting each other depending on how you're aiming throw down your level three staff throw your hammocks use your kraken kill those blight fathers as fast as possible and just burn through round number 30 as fast as possible but at this point if you're able to beat this congratulations you've now unlocked the dark matter calling card for the hard gauntlet here on voyage of despair known as unsinkable but this gauntlet absolutely sucks and you guys probably are just watching this to see how difficult it is but if you guys did complete it then props to you for being an absolute god at black ops 4 zombies for actually sticking it through but that's about it this has been dk dynamite check all links down below in the description for all the other normal gauntlets that are here in black ops 4 zombies i would say at the very least you guys could probably attempt the normal gauntlets across all maps and you would feel like you're at least getting somewhere but for the hard gauntlet you're literally just unlocking different versions of the same calling card and the exact same sticker with a purple outline nothing too special at all and definitely doesn't increase replayability especially if you don't even like gauntlet or voids of despair to begin with but that's a topic for a separate video that's about it and peace out everyone